John Paul Stevens was a conservative Republican when President Gerald Ford nominated him to the Supreme Court in 1975. But he stepped down more than three decades later as a leader of the liberal side of the bench, arguing the court changed, not his judicial philosophy. It has moved dramatically, that's right. And I, I, I guess a radical word may well apply. Stevens grew up in his family's Chicago hotel during the Roaring Twenties. In World War II, he analyzed radio signals for the Navy before becoming a lawyer, judge, and Supreme Court justice. He retired at 90 years old, replaced by President Obama appointee Elena Kagan. Justice Stevens is probably one of the least known justices publicly, and it's ironic because he has had as big an impact on the Supreme Court and on American society as any justice. In his career, Stevens voted in favor of abortion rights, affirmative action, and gay rights long before it became mainstream. In uh, 1986, when I was clerking for him, the Supreme Court issued an opinion that said that it was okay to have criminal penalties for gay consensual sex. 17 years later, the Supreme Court reversed that opinion and said Justice Stevens was right in his dissent in that case. Near the end of his tenure in 2008, he strongly opposed the death penalty. I firmly believe it's unwise policy, but I think there's a more difficult question as to whether it's a constitutionally uh, permissible punishment. When Stevens' view did not carry the day, he crafted powerful dissents. In Citizens United, a landmark 2009 campaign finance case, the majority ruled the government could not ban political spending by corporations. In his dissent, Stevens accused the majority of rejecting, as he put it, the common sense of American people. He also didn't mince words about the 2000 decision that cleared the way for George W. Bush's presidency, writing, quote, the identity of the loser is perfectly clear. It is the nation's confidence in the judge as an impartial guardian of the rule of law. What are some of the other areas where the court ruled in a way you wish it really hadn't? Well, do we have just an hour? To... <laughs> Stevens also disagreed with his liberal colleagues when the court ruled burning an American flag was considered protected free speech. He said, quote, sanctioning the public desecration of the flag will tarnish its value, both for those who cherish the ideas for which it waves and for those who desire to don the robes of martyrdom by burning it. I don't think anybody who heard him read that dissent, the passion with which he looked at the flag and what it meant for him, could really ever think about the American flag the same way when you look at it, whatever you thought about the legal issue. On the bench, he was known as a soft-spoken Midwesterner with a searing intellect. Extreme uh, gentlemanliness, a courtly manner with one of the most acute, razor-sharp minds, uh, frankly, that's ever sat on the court. Stevens retired in 2010, receiving the Presidential Medal of Freedom two years later. And in 2018, after a school shooting in Florida, he penned an op-ed calling for the repeal of the Second Amendment. He was 97 years old at the time, but John Paul Stevens' mind and his words were still razor sharp.